tell you, it sure does feel good to sit a spell. Rest, do a little whittling, chaw the fat with the boys, pick the banjo, just sit back and rest a while. <laughs> Leisure activity, that's what General Grooms calls it. And by cracky, we deserve it. Me and the boys has fought long and hard to get here. As a matter of fact, it took us now on to about a year to get where we are today. I remember when it all started. I was a standing guard outside of the command tent when General Grooms himself come traipsing up. Ten. As you were, as you were. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. General Grooms was there to meet with Colonel Martin, Major Belo, Major Hobbins, and Colonel Blondin to plan the attack. Deal. They cussed and discussed strategies till the wee hours of the morning. And there were times when things got pretty rough. All right, Mr. Lucky, can you beat a full house? Read them and weep. Four aces. Finally, when the sun come up, they agreed on the plans. Major Belo and his rangers would take the central route Major Hobbins and his heroes would protect the eastern flank. Major Kraybacher and his crusaders would cover the western flank. And Colonel Blondin would lead his fearless Canadians in defending the outer perimeters. All right, gentlemen. I'm satisfied with the plan. And I'll see you in New Orleans. Welp, once General Grooms left, them fellers commenced to setting their own plans in action. I'm off to round up my heroes. My rangers are ready to go. My crusaders are chomping at the bit. Can anybody lend me a pair of boots? Well, I'll tell you. It weren't no time till them fellers rounded up them troops and set out for New Orleans. Colonel Blondin sounded the trumpet, and his troops answered the call faster than you can say PMIA. They come from all over Canada, Alberta, Saskatchewan, the Yukon, the Northwestern Territories, British Columbia, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritime Provinces. <laughs> yep, they come from just about everywhere, and some of them even spoke a different language. But they all had one thing in common. They was Canadians and darn proud of it. Colonel Blondin issued them uniforms, and pretty soon, they was headed for the border. Meanwhile, Major Belo's troops was fighting tooth and nail to reach their objective. They were attacked again and again by sneaky guerrilla bands, and there was a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. But Belo's rangers were tough, and soon those varmints hightailed it to the hills. Before long, Belo's rangers made it all the way to the southwest shore of Lake Ponchar Train. There, they dug in and waited for the Allies to arrive. Now on the eastern flank, Hobbins' heroes have made pretty good progress. But now, they was pinned down in a stand of timber just outside of Baton Rouge. They was a running out of ammunition real quick and things looked pretty bad. When they was completely out of powder and shot, they drawed their boy knives and waited for the worst. Things got real quiet and Hobbins' heroes began to wonder if the enemy was ever going to mount their final attack. But when the sun came out and the fog and the smoke cleared up, they found that the enemy had retreated to the hills. <laughs> Seems that the enemy just didn't realize that Hobbins' heroes had run out of ammunition. They just give up, tucked those tails between their legs and slithered on out of there. Well, <laughs> Hobbins' heroes whooped it up and hollered out loud when they realized their victory. And soon, they marched out of them woods and on to New Orleans. Now, on the western flank, Kraybacher's crusaders were fighting a different battle. They was slogging their way through a god-awful swamp. It'd been weeks since they set foot on solid ground, and them boys was plumb tuckered out. And them swamp critters didn't make things any easier for them either. Leeches, gators, bats, water moccasins, cotton mouse, and several critters that hadn't even been named yet. More than a few times, a crusader would wander out of line and get stuck in quicksand. And Major Kraybacher himself even rescued a few of them. They wandered deeper and deeper into the swamp 
and still might be wondering there today if an Acajun swamp hermit hadn't pointed the way to higher ground. Whip. All the armies finally rendezvoused at Lake Pontchartrain. Let me tell you, we was real happy to see one another again. And we were sad to learn that we'd lost a few of our buddies along the way. That night, we got a good night's sleep, and at the crack of dawn, we were up and ready for the assault on the city of New Orleans. As we were forming up, General Grooms and Colonel Martin spoke to us and offered their congratulations. Congratulations. At those inspiring words, our bugler sounded the charge, and we stormed the city of New Orleans. Major Belo and his rangers went straight down the middle. Colonel Blondin and the fearless Canadians close behind. Major Craybacher and his crusaders on the left, and Major Hobbins and his heroes on the right flank. We fought like men possessed, and soon the city of New Orleans fell. And we've been celebrating ever since. I'll tell you what, we even wrote a song about the things we've done since we've been down here. Right, boys? Right! Back in 85, we took a little trip, along with Colonel Martin down the mighty Mississippi. We met in Louisiana with a gallant gentle grooms, and he put us in a nice hotel with really fancy rooms. Sing it, boys! Well, we worked real hard to reach our destination. If you've seen us work, then you know what service means. Being repaid for our sense of dedication, our reward for excellence are here in New Orleans. Ready, boys? Up! Two, three, four. Our tummies growled as we walked down Bourbon Street. So we stopped into a Cajun place to grab a bite to eat. The Creole food was spicy, so we washed it down with beer. And we fogged the restaurant windows up as steam came out our ears. Well, we worked real hard to reach our destination. If you've seen us work, then you know what service means. Being repaid for our sense of dedication. Our reward for excellence are here in New Orleans. Well, we clapped our hands as we listened to the band, and we tapped our toes to the swinging Dixieland. We saw an alligator, and we took a river cruise. As the paddle wheels were churning, we were burning up the booze. Well, we worked real hard to reach our destination. If you've seen us work, then you know what service means. Being repaid for our sense of dedication. Our reward for excellence are here in New Orleans. Up, two, three, four. Up, two, three, yep. four. It was a real battle getting here. But by cracky is worth every minute of it. Right now, I'm gearing up for California, a place called San Diego. Ever hear of it? Real pretty place. A real grand place, if you know what I mean. Why don't you come along with me? 